So the natural states of elements. Most elements are very reactive, and so we do not find them in their uncombined form. You don't find um, just iron in the ground. You find iron ore. You find it combined with other elements. So most elements are generally found as compounds. The exceptions are the noble metals, which include gold, platinum, and silver, and the noble gases. And this word noble, what does that make you think of? Who are the European nobles? They're the kings and the queens and the dukes and stuff, right? And they don't associate with the common people because they're better than us. Or that's what they think anyway. So they're kind of above and they don't associate, right? So the noble metals, the noble gases, do not form compounds very easily. They don't associate with the other elements. Kind of snobs. Some of the elements are naturally present as diatomic elements. So diatomic. Di is a prefix that means two. Atomic means one. I just mean, two. where did that come from? Oh my goodness, let's switch the brain on. That'll be better. Okay, di means two. Atomic refers to atoms. Oh, okay, so diatomic molecules have two atoms. So some of the elements are found as diatomic molecules. And we have a, some pictures here. Um, some pictures that don't correspond to... to yeah, what, what is this? Apparently I've never seen this slide before in my life. Um, let's just look at the captions and not the pictures. I don't know where the pictures are coming from. The pictures are of sodium um, and chlorine. And the, the captions are talking about nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen gas is found as N2 molecules, diatomic. So the nitrogen in the air is all little molecules of two nitrogen atoms. And oxygen gas has O2 molecules. You don't find individual oxygen atoms floating around. They're, they're all molecules. Chlorine is another diatomic molecule, a diatomic element. And so chlorine gas is naturally present as two atoms bonded together. It's still an element, though, because it only contains one kind of atom. It's not a compound. So there are seven elements that exist as diatomic molecules. And these, these are the seven. And we need to know which ones these are. Okay, so we have a way, we have a silly sentence to help us remember that. It's called a mnemonic because the first letters of the words tell us, um, stand for something. So we say, horses need oats, need oats, good grief. Four clear brown eyes. So horses, H for hydrogen, need N for nitrogen, oats. O for oxygen, F for fluorine, CL for chlorine, BR for bromine, and this one's a bit of a stretch, eyes, clear brown eyes. So hydrogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Those are the seven elements that always exist as diatomic molecules. And on the periodic table, let's, oh, I probably can't go back to the periodic table because that would be, that'd be too convenient. Um, I have to do it this way. There's the periodic table. 
If we look at the periodic table, we see that um, nitrogen is element number seven. Dang it. Nitrogen is element number seven. And then if we make a seven here, we've got nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. They're all right there making the number seven. A seven starting with seven plus hydrogen. We're going to find out that hydrogen is like the baby brother of the element family and he gets away with breaking all of the rules. So he is a diatomic element. He's also a non-metal who is hanging out on the left side of the periodic table with all the metals. That's just another way to remember those diatomic elements. Some elements can exist in different forms as elements. These are called allotropes, and um, I'm just telling you about them. I'm not going to quiz you or test you on them, but allotropes are just different forms of a given element. Um, carbon is one, um, probably the most notable example. Carbon can exist as diamonds, as graphite, or as these really cool um, substance called Buckminster fullerene which is, um, it's like this geodesic dome of carbon atoms. And they're called buckyballs for short. They're pretty cool. Um, you may or may not have heard of those. But you probably have heard of diamonds, and many of you are writing with graphite right now. Graphite is what we call pencil lead. And it's black, and it's soft, and it's slippery, right? It is made of just carbon atoms. And a diamond is clear, and very hard, right? And it is also made just of carbon atoms. They're both elemental forms of carbon, but they have very different properties because of how the atoms are attached to each other. Here's some pictures. Um, here's a diamond. In a diamond, the carbon atoms are arranged in a three-dimensional structure. This is a crystalline solid. In graphite, the the carbon atoms are arranged in layers two-dimensionally and what makes it slippery is that there's the interaction between this layer and this layer is very weak and so they can slide against each other and, and smear around and that's why that makes them a good um, writing uh, substance and this is an illustration of Buckminster fullerene it, you can see why they call them buckyballs. They look like balls of carbon atoms. They're pretty cool. Just examples, though, of an element existing in some different forms.